Now let's consider that the travel agency has requested a ranking of all the countries according to the number of tourist attractions they offer. So, we need to obtain a list similar to this one, which shows all the countries ordered from highest to lowest by the number of attractions they've registered. As we can see, each line will correspond to a country, showing its identifier, its name, and the number of tourist attractions that it has. The problem here is that we have to sort this information according to this last value, which is not in the database. It has to be calculated. How can this list be implemented? One option, applying the concepts we already know, would be to define a formula attribute at the level of the country transaction structure, and then run a for each command with country as the base transaction, ordering from highest to lowest by that calculated attribute. Remember that the parentheses around the attributes in the order clause define a reverse order, which, in this case, would be from highest to lowest. This solution is completely valid, but it's also valid to solve a requirement without the need to add new attributes to a transaction just to solve a certain query. So, we're going to solve this requirement in another way, adding new concepts that will be very useful for more complex cases. Let's start talking about structured data types. So far, we've always used simple data types. We've defined attributes and domains of numeric, character, date, image type, and so on. If, for example, we now want to store the identifier and name of a country in variables, then we need two variables. But we'll see next that we can also use compound data types. A compound data type allows several data items to be stored together in a single variable. To put it simply, it's like grouping several simple variables together under one name. A structured data type is created by means of a GeneXus object of this type. The data type created can only then be assigned to a variable and never to an attribute. From GeneXus, we'll then create an object of SDT type. And we'll name it SDT country. Note that we place SDT before the word because a transaction and a structured data type with the same name cannot exist within the same KB. Remember that we already have the country transaction. For now, we only want to save the identifier and the name of the countries, so we define those items or those members in the structure. ID of numeric type and name of character type. We save, and for this definition we've just made, GeneXus created the data type SDT country, so we can already start creating variables based on this data type. The question we now ask ourselves is, how can we load values into a structured variable? Well, we've already created a procedure to list the countries, so let's go to the source to see how we can load values. First, we need to define a variable, so we select the Variables tab, and we'll define a variable called Country Item. This is based on the SDT country data type. We return to the source, and as a first example, we'll load the data from France, and we'll do it manually. Note that by typing the variable country item and pressing the period key, we can already see the items that make up the data type. We'll then load this ID that corresponds to France and the name France. This way, 
we load the variable manually. Another option would be through a for each command by positioning ourselves in the record corresponding to France, and then loading the variable country item with the value of country ID for the ID item, and with the value of country name for the name item. We go to the layout, and insert the variable, which we see is structured. So we'll add in the print block the item corresponding to the ID and the name. We run it by pressing F5. Okay, let's see now that when the structure to be created matches completely or partially to the structure of a transaction, we can drag this transaction into the structure of the SDT without generating any kind of ambiguity, because Genexus can distinguish between the attributes of the transaction and the items of an SDT, even if their names match. Remember that a structured data type can only be assigned to variables and not to attributes. We should also note that the structure of an SDT can be very complex. For example, each country has a collection of cities, and it's clear that the data types of the SDT members are derived from the attributes. Now, let's think about this. What if we need to keep a collection of countries? How can it be done? We have two options. One is to define the SDT as a collection, and to do so, we only need to check this box that says, is collection. Thus, when saving the changes, Genexus will create the SDT country data type for the collection, and the SDT country .SDT country item data type for the collection item. Another way, is to leave our SDT as we have originally defined it and mark the collection at the level of the defined variable. In the next video, we'll talk in detail about the collection variables. We won't be uploading these definitions to Genexus server just yet because the request isn't finished. We'll do so after completing it in the next videos.